Okay, this is um, one question from the um, mock we did in April 2020, and it's from the October 2019 paper. Um, for a particular website, hacking attempts occur at a rate of 0.3 per hour. Now, the first thing to realise from that is we should actually declare our variables. So if I say x um, and declare it as being a tax, Uh, and then hours. I can use this repeatedly uh, throughout. Now we've been told that 0 0.3 per hour is a rate. As soon as you see the word rate, you start thinking lambda. So lambda equals 0 0.3. That says it is a Poisson. Now let's check. So x1 is a Poisson with a parameter of 3. Uh, let's check. They are assuming, the assumptions here are that the attacking intents are independent. So it's not um, a whole pile of people going at the same time. These are independent hackers around the world, randomly hitting this website. So it's not going to be um, a big server farm all attacking at the same time. Uh, they occur singly. That effectively means that our, our system should have only one. You can only hack one at a time. Um, there is no upper limit. So it takes as one connection, but it stops with zero time. There's no upper limit in theory. Or it's very big. Um, so they are cursively the independent events, and it's based upon this rate. So, yeah, this is the conditions that we're saying we must apply for this to work. Um, so, show the probability of a hacking attempt taking place randomly in a selected one hour period is 0 0.250 to three significant figures. Uh, first thing to check is do we have it in have that in our price on tables? So we have a quick look at the price on table and the price on table goes from 0 0.5 and 1.0. So we can't use price on tables to solve this problem. So we've got to do it by calculation. And to do it by calculation we need to remember how do you calculate uh, price on calculations which is actually in the form of a booklet for us. Just scroll to find it. They actually tell us the formula. Oh. Let's put it back to there. I just want to drag that in. Okay, let's just scroll down. And uh, we're looking at this price and calculation. E to the minus lambda, lambda x over x factorial, given to us in the formula booklet. So the price on calculation of x1 is equal to x is <coughs> uh, e to the minus lambda, lambda to the x over x factorial. And what we're trying to find is show the probability of at least one attacking event. So we're looking for x1 being at least, that's greater than or equal to 1. The calculation here is less than or equal to, uh, is equal to, sorry, not less than or equal to. So we need probability of x1 less than or equal to 0 because this is continuous, these two things do not bind up. If it was a normal, yes, they, they would be the same value. And so therefore we need to calculate the price on for x equals zero. So put our values in, price on x1 equals zero is equal to e to the minus 0.3. Um, 0.3 to the power of 0, which is 1, and 1 to the power of factorial. These two both are correct to 1, so it's just e to the minus 0.3. To 
to the calculator around. And we're doing E, which is shift and log. Not points, a minus, not points, eh? Don't forget the minus. And that gives me 0 0.7081. 7408. 18, and small digits. So probability of x1 being greater than or equal to 1 is 1 minus this, which is 0 0.25 9 1. Um, showing that 1 there is just for an examiner so that they know I have actually calculated it and therefore this approximates to the answer they're giving 0 0.259. There's quite a lot of overkill in that uh, solution, but that's all the steps needed. The thing you really need to be sure of is every time make sure you do these two and make sure you do the other parts. Uh, you know your calculations are clear. So the marks for this one were actually um, one for showing the press on and these two lines and one for doing the final calculation, that'll probably be M1 and A1. Exactly six hacking attempts take place in the random selected 24 hour periods, and now we're looking at 24 hours. So this is a different distribution, X24 I'm using, and that is a Poisson for 0 0.3 times 24. Uh, so my Poisson distribution is uh, 7.2 and if I go to the tables again I look at the tables there are no values for lambda 7.2 so I can't use that I'm gonna have to do it by calculation again I'm using the same formula they said exactly 6 so probably x24 equals 6 e to the minus 7.2 is my lambda uh, 7.2 to the power of oh, 6 is the number of occurrences all over 6 factorial. And that should give me my calculation. Now, uh, check it all in quickly. So we've got uh, e to the shift, e to the 7. Point, minus 7.2, don't forget the minus. I keep forgetting the minuses when I do these myself. Um, 7.2 to the power of 6. And that didn't do the power off properly. Divide by 6 factorial. And we're looking for the exclamation mark. Could be down here with the probabilities. It's not. Ah, there, there's my factorial. It's on here on this button. Give me the answer 1.44458. A suitable accuracy is uh, for their probabilities, they show four significant figures, so we should be okay to three. 1. 0.144. So that's three significant, uh, four, three significant figures. Um, all their probabilities are calculated to four significant figures. It allows for some rounding. Right, part C, this is the bit where some people made some errors, and it was really only in the commentary on the end. Uh, let's go back to the top, read the question. Following a security update, uh, Sarah believes that the rate of hacking attempts on the website has decreased. <coughs> she records 38 hacking attempts in a seven day period following the update. So this now means that we've got to calculate new lambda, seven day period, 724s. Uh, 168, so we're looking at 168 period. Um, now you can define, uh, we've got to define the, uh, our hypothesis and test it to a 5% significance level. So, uh, with these, I, I keep saying I dislike finding the critical region and testing that way, just because that leads to p-hacking. Um, it is an acceptable method in exams. I just believe it's a slightly uh, dubious solution. So 
We've got our X of 168, that's 168 hours, that's seven days. Gives me a Poisson of 0.3 times 168, which is 54.4. Now I'm stating this in this case using this variable. Um, and it's the right mean for 168 hours. You can declare it, and I'm going to declare in terms of this. So I'm going to say my lambda for 168 or seven days is 54.4. That's my null hypothesis. The alternate hypothesis is lambda for seven days. And if we've got better, we expect this to go down. So we're looking for a decrease of 50.4. That's purely what the hypothesis is testing. It's a one-tailed test. Um, according to the mark scheme, you can also say that our normal lambda is 0 0.3 and the alternative is 0 0.3. Or they can jump to the next section and do the hypothesis based upon the approximation. So the next step is 50.4. We have no way of doing it on our calculations. We don't want to be trying uh, lots and lots of values up to about 50. So what is a suitable approximation? Well, from binomial goes to Poisson, binomial goes to normal, and Poisson goes to normal. There is no way to go back to a binomial approximation, and our Poisson we're going across and is lambda significant, i.e. bigger than 10. Yes. Uh, so what's the declaration? The declaration is the mean is our lambda, and lambda for Poisson is also the variance, so it's lambda lambda, or the square root of lambda squared, to remind ourselves that this is our standard deviation. Standard deviation is the square root of lambda. That's a little side knot. So now we're going to do our approximation. So x, 1, 6, 8, normal. Oh, I don't see why I did it on the equals. It should be a, a distribution function. I did it okay before, I hope. Yeah, I did. Just made a mistake on this one. So a normalized version of this is norm distribution with 50.4 as our two parameters. Okay. Um, and that leads to the alternative that they offer here, which is similar to our lambda. And they could say h0, h1. And they did it in terms of mu equals 50.4 or mu less than 50.4. That's the alternate hypothesis. <coughs> now we're coming into the section where a couple of people made mistakes. Um, first one is to say our probability of x168 normalized. We want to show that the number is less than this. So I'm not normalized. First, our original value. So this is the Poisson value. Is should we call it 38? So we want to reduce by 38. Probability that the number is less than or equal to 38. And we're trying to say, is this 38 hacks? Is that inside my 5% at the bottom layer? Because it's a uh, this is my critical region. Now we've got to adjust in a minute because 38 is a, a a discrete value. We've got to turn this into a continuous one. To conclude the 38, we need to go above it and include all values less. Okay, so to go above it, our actual value we're going to be testing is 38.5 when we go to the normal version. So this is approximately equal to probability of x168 normalized less than or equal to, and this should strictly be this value, the less than. Now you do get marked for using 37.5 but you lose, um, and in my opinion I think it was a 2 um, Two accuracy marks if you lose if you use 37.5. So this 
38.5 includes the 38. That's the important thing on this, is when you think about the number line and you're going from the discrete value to the continuous, you must include that 38 if it is inside your inclusion. So now we need to calculate for a z is a normal distribution. This bit is just a nicety. Just using z in, on its own should normally be accepted without any problem. You don't have to make that declaration, although that's implied. Z comes from my x minus the mean divided by sigma. Remember, sigma is the square root of 50.4. So my z value, my critical point, or the value we are testing, is 38.5 minus 50.4 divide by the square root of 50.4. And that says that my value that I'm testing, my test z, is 38.5 minus 50.4, and then divide by the square root of 50.4. Uh, one error people make with the calculator is sometimes they do this straight through and they put the division on the end. And if you do that, this 38.5 doesn't get divided by the square root part. And this gives me a number to test of minus 1.676. Um, we're going to have a look at the tables in a minute to find the value. Okay, so uh, we've got a Z value. It's a negative one. We know in our tables when we look at them that we do not have negative. There are no negative values in our Z values here to look up a probability uh, sum. And notice this is actually also degree for all values up to that Z. So when we come to calculate it, what we're looking at is a normal distribution. We want minus 1.676 or smaller, which is that region. Hopefully you all remember your normal distribution rules. Flip it to give us our positive 1.676, but the table will give me the probability below that. That's what the phi is. That will give me all numbers below that line. We want the other side, so we want to do 1 minus the phi of z. So my probability of x168, the Poisson version, less than or equal to 38, is approximately equal to my distribution at the top, the normal one, less than or equal to 38.5. And from everything we've just seen, this is approximately equal to the peer, uh, one, the total, one minus the phi of 1.676, which is the cumulative distribution function. And if we go to the tables, 1.68, which is the round, this is 0.9535. So when you subtract it, uh, you get probability of 0 0.0465. This is a means that we've got a probability of 4.65% which is smaller than the 5% of the test. That means we are in the critical region, which means that we can, we have evidence to reject. We don't say it is wrong, we just have evidence to reject. Um, our null hypothesis. And this is the mark some people lost is, because it says in here, comment, it didn't say describe, it says comment, we need to put it back into this context. 
and the alternative hypothesis here was it has decreased so the mean attempts to hack have decreased which also tells us that uh, Sayara Sayara Sayara's uh, belief is correct supported not correct supported okay. so that's question one in its entirety uh, possibly a little longer than it would take to get those number of marks.